If you troll the internet watching interesting science videos, you may have seen one showing a slinky hanging vertically. This one's mine. When the top end is released, the stationary bottom end of the spring does not react until enough time has elapsed for a wave from the now free top end of the spring to travel to the bottom, at which time the bottom begins to fall as well. Seen in person or especially in slow motion video footage, the phenomenon is striking. Here we extend this experiment into the realm of circular motion. Here's the idea. If a spring is whirled in a circle with one end free, the free end will extend more or less outwards due to its own inertia, or expressed in a rotating reference frame, the action of centrifugal force. The free end will travel in a circle. I suppose it's fairly obvious that the faster you swing the slinky, the more it will be stretched. And, in analogy with the vertically hanging case, if the inner end is then released, we expect the free end will continue on its circle as before for a little time until a wave can propagate from the inner end to the outer. Jeff here, and this is the apparatus that we use for the spinning springs experiment. It's a turntable that can spin up to about 250 revolutions per minute. It was originally built for an experiment flown on NASA's zero gravity airplane but we're repurposing it here for the spinning springs experiment. Basic idea is that there's this horizontal bar that is spring-loaded and held in place in the upper position by this latch. This servo here, under control of the circuit board here, can release that latch, causing the bar to drop down. It's triggered with an infrared remote control. And so what we did is we took some springs, we set this up on a theater stage with a high-speed video camera looking down from above. And we take some springs, a, a spring here, we hook it onto the very top, and we set it spinning. And you'll see it's longer than it was before. It's a little scary to be right next to it. And I'm going to trigger the infrared right now and off the spring goes. So that's the experiment, and you're about to see some of the data footage uh, as we talk about the results of this experiment. How does the spring behave as it's released from rotational motion? Here's the experiment set up on the stage, and this is the footage of that same run as seen by the high-speed camera looking down. The frame rate was 300 frames per second, so when played at normal 30 frames per second video rate, the action is slowed down by a factor of 10. In this one, before release, notice the droop of the spring from horizontal due to gravity. Notice that before release, the spring is not lined up with the turntable. We call this the drag angle because it's caused by air resistance. Now we plot the inner and outer ends of the slinky, which makes obvious that our original idea was correct. The outer end does indeed continue on its original circular path after the inner end is released, as if nothing has happened, until the wave, in the form of a kink, reaches the outer end. Here's one more, this a different, somewhat stiffer spring. You can see that both the inner and outer ends follow circular paths that abruptly change whenever the kink reflects at an end. Here are a few graphs to show our quantitative results. This one shows that the extension or stretch of the spring is greater the faster the angular velocity, omega measured here in radians per second. Feel free to pause the video to look carefully. In this and the following graphs, the red circles are measurements off our video data, and the green diamonds are values for the same angular velocities from a computer simulation written by Tom. The simulation includes the effects of gravity and air resistance or drag. This graph shows that the angle of that kink or bend, which appears constant for most of its travel down the spring, is also nearly constant no matter the angular velocity. We didn't anticipate this result. Here we see that the faster the turntable is spinning, the droop of the spring, how much it hangs below horizontal before release, is less. 
also the angle by which the spring lags behind the release mechanism is greater for higher omegas due to air resistance or drag lastly for a given spring the time it takes for the kink to travel down the spring is independent of the angular velocity and therefore the length of the spring this is true for non-spinning springs as well a wiggle will travel down a spring in the same amount of time no matter how long it is stretched this is because if a spring is stretched to a long length the greater tension required to do that causes the wave to travel faster which allows it to travel the long distance in the same time as when the spring is short our results show this holds for spinning springs as well even though the tension varies along the spring's length the travel time depends only on the so-called spring constant or Hooke's law constant that describes how stiff the spring is if you want to know the gory mathematical details hit pause now so you can study this derivation our paper describing the analysis in detail including the numerical simulation can be found on archive and the paper raw video footage and the simulation program can also be downloaded from compadre Thank you so much for watching.